So finally, we're going to look at two forms of indifference curves that kind of take the uh, assumptions we made about uh, the normal preferences, so this graph here, and it's kind of going to extend them to one extreme. So we've now got perfect substitutes and perfect complements. So if ever these come up on an exam, you'll know them when you see them. So with normal preferences, we had all those properties that we had just covered. So we've got convex indifference curves, we've got downward sloping uh, indifference curves as well, and notice how they never intersect. So we've seen this. So what about the perfect substitutes case? Well here, notice that they're always negatively sloped, but here they don't have that uh, kind of bowed outward shape. Technically, they're still convex. So this is kind of one extreme form here, where we have uh, exactly one straight line. What that represents is the marginal rate of substitution is going to be equal everywhere along here on the curve. So what does that mean? Well, we're saying there's no diminishing marginal returns effect. So in this case, that's not going to apply. So what kinds of situations might we have at perfect substitutes? Well, in the first case, we had chips and coke. So you didn't want to have too many chips because then your mouth was going to be dry and you needed something to drink. But what if we got a different combination of goods? What if, in the perfect substitute skates, we have Coke and Pepsi? Maybe you really would be happy only drinking only Coke or only drinking Pepsi. In this case, having only one good or the other will in fact give you the same utility value. So in this case, utility value of 10, or if you had more income, utility value of 20. In the last case here, we're going to look at perfect complements. So this is another kind of exception to the normal preferences situation. So here, what's going on? Well, first I'm going to start you off with an example. So we've got one left shoe and one right shoe. Well, we need two shoes in order to be able to wear a pair. So if we had two left shoes, or even three left shoes, or ten, it's not going to leave us any better off. We need both a left and a right in order to get any value out of that pair. So what does that mean? Well, we're going to say here that it doesn't matter how many more of left shoes we have, if we've only got one right one, we're only going to get a utility value of 10. And the same goes the other way. So what if we had only one left shoe and you know, an infinitely many number of right shoes? We're still only going to get one pair, so that's to say a utility value of 10. The only way for us to get more value is to have more complete pairs. So in this case, maybe we have two left shoes and two right shoes. So notice here that that's illustrating the perfect complements point, where you need to have some of both in order to have any increase in value at all. 